Getting set and ready to go green here for round number 17 of the FBRL Harry's National Series season. The season is coming to a close here as Nick Breeding on pole position alongside Bradley Bishop Jr. Six races to go. And the number nine will lead us to the green. Green flag in the air. Breeding clears the 11 immediately with a good jump through turns one and two. Three wide behind for second. Jeff James peaks, maybe looked for a four wide move, but decided that it was a little bit too early. As Brad Bishop Jr., the outside pole sitter, gets shuffled outside the top five. As everyone scrambles, trying to attain trap position, breeding leads lap number one. And Corey Williams, he is looking for four wide on Ryan Butcher and Caps. Caps makes contact with Butcher. As everyone scrambling for positions here. Butcher trying to clear caps for, for third, but it is a log jam of cars here in the back in mid pack. Sam England, the 77, goes way wide towards the wall. Logan Cloud hits him, and we got contact in the back. We got Ryan Reed and Poteet in trouble. Poteet's around in the 83. There he goes. And we got Troubles Bouchard makes contact with Peter Ronjak and several cars are in the wall. The 22, there it's the Embia as Poteet slams the five of McKinney who slid down the track, Gradden in trouble. Both the Red Bulls end up in wrecks here. As the caution comes out for the first time tonight. On a lap three incident, Tim Fiegel in the 87, 31st in Norris points with heavy front end damage. And we got an issue as well. Kukulon's around in the 69. He might have got spun after the caution. He's got heavy rear damage. A big accident here number three. See what happens here. Dylan Poti makes it four wide. Slides up into Ryan Reed. And Reed and Poti make contact off the exit of two. Griffin Lapo McDermott gets slammed to the wall. Kyle Collins with heavy front end damage as well. And then that wasn't the first accident. We had a second accident here as we saw Bouchard have some issues as well. And Poti with a hard slam into McKinney. Here's another view of this incident here. It kind of looked like Collins. Did he make contact with the 24? No, does not look like it as, ooh, Collins, I mean, he got a piece of it, but it looks like Reed and Poti just got together coming off the corner. And that resulted in them wrecking. And you can see with Bouchard, him and Anjak, they, um, they basically just wrecked, racing back to the line. I'll have to look at that one a bit better. Bouchard was dead last at the time of the wreck, so let's see what happens to him. Ooh, Bouchard, he's trying to race back to the line. He tries to be on Jack, but he just comes back up the apron because of the geometry and momentum and causes an additional incident, and that was completely avoidable by Bouchard. I'm not sure what the heck he was thinking there. So we saw Sebastian Kukla with rear damage. So this is racing back to the caution flag as Eric Rodriguez underneath him. And ooh, Kukulon, ooh, he comes down the 63. And um, I, what happens after? 
Ooh, Eric. Ooh, Eric, I don't think he was happy with Kukulon coming across him after the line and just spins him right into the uh, infield wall. That was a bit unnecessary by Rodriguez, and I can imagine Kukulon is very thrilled with that one. And Kukulon, oh yeah, he is letting, he is not happy with the 63. He beat the 63 to the line, but he's staying behind him. I don't think he was very happy with the 63 for that one. Oh boy. Everyone comes to pit road here, and it looks like everyone's gonna go for gas and go. As, yep, just fill up the tank and uh, get the car out there. So nothing too uh, drastic. Just everyone trying to put themselves in a better fuel position here. This is a two-stop race. We're being told Gallon Downey may be in some trouble here, as, oh, he comes into a stall, and then Daniel Voiles and Stuart Grand get together, and then Voiles gets into the back of the 41 as more contact under pit road happens. And Voiles, he is trying to get off the 41, but that's gonna give the 41 some damage, so a bit of a... A bit of a, some ugly action in pit lane. And uh, they're now taking a look under the hood at the 12 because that was significant damage. Well, we had an opening uh, five lap wreck and uh, now we're about to set and go back green. Stuart, Gr Stuart Gratton, Edward Ziemba, and Daniel Bouchard have retired from the race. Gallon Downey lost a lap fixing his car, so he is now going to be in need of a lucky dog. The breeding is still your leader, has led every lap up to this point tonight. He is taking us back to green and we are under green here. Got a really good launch as well. That nine car seems to fire off really well. And if you're Nick breeding, this is a weekend where you really got to put something together here because these past couple races for this nine team have been a disaster. Breeding's championship defense has kind of taken a turn for the worse over these past couple of races. And he's trying to fix that here. And we are right back to scrambling for positions here. Just Jeff James, who uh, got involved in a wreck at Wisconsin. He's now trying to play catch up on his teammate, Corey Williams. And it's going to require some very heavy lifting from the four team. If they want to make another run at the 14, especially with so few little races to go. Breeding continues to lead. Bradley Bishop Jr. sitting quietly in second behind. Cody Goforth taking a peek under the aid of Ryan Butcher trying to potentially make it three wide. Tim Fiegel is off the pace the 87. He had some significant engine damage after getting involved in the wreck caused by Bouchard and Anjag racing back to the line, so he is off the pace, but he's kept the car out there for the time being. So that significant damage is going to make things very difficult here for a couple of these guys. Smashing and Kuklon, that right rear damage seems to have uh, maybe knocked out some balance off the 69 as he makes some contact with Major Robinson in the 81. And uh, Major Robinson, he is uh, kind of in a bit of a pressure situation here. This 81 car has uh, fallen a little bit in the owner's points and they currently sit one point ahead of the 87, his teammate, in the uh, top three owner's points battle. So Robinson trying to uh, keep his car in the top 30. 
Granted, with Fiegel now off the pace, that should make the a bit a little bit easier. But now he needs to focus on trying to catch Joshua Michaels. And Michaels, he's having a really strong night tonight for the 75 team. And uh, I tell you what, Little Falls Motorsports, these past couple races, they have really picked up the pace here. With the hours points battle getting so tight, they have really upped their game and. The growth this team has had this year, you know, they've played the survival game. They've gotten great finishes, even with ter even with difficult, uh, well, I wouldn't say difficult cars or terrible cars, just with, you know, less funded cars. They've accomplished a lot, and they've taken some really massive steps forward this year. And with Michaels, he's been a top 15 car the last couple races, and that seems to still be the case here tonight. But it is still very early. And we'll see if the City 5 team can execute here. Back up here, go forth. Jeff James and Will Goss battle for the third place position. Goss slides up, up into Jeff James trying to get a run as here we go, about for the lead. Bradley Bishop Jr. peeks underneath the nine of breeding. Breeding has led the first 17 laps tonight here, and it looks like he's going to lose the lead to the 11. Bishop Jr. slides underneath the 9. Can he clear Breeding? Looks like he will. He does. So first lead change of the night here, as Breeding immediately peeks, peeks down to try and make a counter move, but Bishop cut him off. And the 11 keeps the lead. Here's uh, Roberto Crown Jr., the number 98, trying for Bishop Family Racing, making their Hardy's National Series debut. Points race debut, I should say. It was, uh, they managed to qualify into this race on speed, which was. Uh, Quite a bit of surprise here, but this is a team that does have some Turner support. Or at least Turner equipment of some kind, so... It took them a couple attempts, but they made the field, and they're certainly getting the Hardy's National Series experience in a five-car battle for... the uh, illustrious... Uh, whatever position they're running for. Well, whatever the position is, it's not exactly very high. But still, you know, this is definitely a race where these guys are just trying to get some experience. They've got a an interesting young prospect in Crown Jr. who's been racing in the truck series for the past couple of years. So uh, this is definitely a race where they're just looking to uh, get some lap times in and help uh, develop their Hardy's car for future races. Balfour Lee, Breeding, gets the lead back from Bradley Bishop Jr. So Bishop's time in the in the lead ends up being a little bit short here. As Corey Williams now looking for third, the championship leader. He is uh, looking for second from Cody Goforth here, and it looks like he's probably going to get it. Corey trying to clear this 92 car. Cody Goforth, who has been just so great this season, looking for that first win. Single Z Racing is uh, definitely another team that's taken some big steps this year. That switch to Honda has paid dividends for that team. And breeding leads, but Corey Williams, he is on the move. He's got a really good long run car, it looks like. This 14 is just getting faster and faster. And Breeding has got to be feeling the pressure. For the lead, Corey Williams dives it up the inside of the number nine. And the championship leader, who would love to walk away with maximum points tonight. He is, uh, oh, he comes up to the nine, tries to force him offline, and the 14 clears for the lead. And Breeding falls to second. And Cody Goforth now trying to come back on him here as they're about to put the 87 to 10 Fiegel lap down.
This is not what you want to see if you are Jeff James, Nick Breeding, or Christian Vargas. As this 14 team has just been stellar on intermediates this year. It's been their bread and butter. We got scramble here. Breeding was leading. He's about to fall outside the top five potentially as he is hounded by Goss. He's hounded by Bishop Jr. And he's just trying to hang on here. I think the nine car is just slowly falling off as the run goes on. There goes Corey underneath the 87. Makes quick work of him. Fiegel respectfully getting out of the way. You can see the A7 is just really lacking. The cor it corners fine. That car is fine in the corners, but the engine power is the problem. And Bring is now getting boxed in. And Bishop Jr. is going to take advantage of it, as does Ellison, and perhaps Jeff James as well. Ooh, Breeding's got to be getting irritated. He is losing spots because of this 87. Beagle slides up the corner. And Breeding finally gets underneath them here, but that cost him several spots. And Fiegel, he is, uh, oh boy. And, uh, yeah. Here comes Corey Williams for the lead in the number 14. The championship leader looking to make a big pass here against this number nine. And Corey Williams who would love to walk away from Chicagoland with a win here to make the next five races absolute hell for his title contending rivals. He has taken the lead here and has shoved Breeding offline and go forth now looking for second place. Will Goss now joining the fray here in the number 50. Bradley Bishop Jr. now trying to uh, run these guys down. Lab traffic up ahead, Tim Fiegel up the road, ahead of this 14, and they should put him a lap down. This 87 is really struggling on the straightaways here, you can see the massive difference. And Breeding now, he is getting way offline there, he is shoved out and he's going to fall from first to potentially fifth here. In a handful and a couple handful of laps and now it's gonna be in some trouble here because he might get trapped behind Fiegel on the straightaway here comes Bishop jr. on the bottom Ooh, if I'm the nine you may want to cut your losses then oh Bishop oh he let off the straightaway to box the nine in Bishop jr. he let off the gas he just let Fiegel do the work for him Bishop Jr. was lacking that straightaway speed himself, and he just, oh, oh, man, that, I mean, that's a way to establish a pass, but my goodness. A lot of cars with heavy damage racing each other. Hard as Poutine hooks the five into the 84 of Cameron Lassard into the 62 of Griffin Lapo McDermott, and that will bring the caution out for the second time tonight. Corey Williams crosses the line as the leader, but another incident involving Poteet and McKinney. Just look at what caused the caution here as Poteet just comes up and hooks the five into Lassard. That's the second time Poti has gotten involved in an incident coming off of turn two. And the second time McKinney's been a, a victim of contact with the 83. Red Bull Racing is having a real tough night. Pit stops underway here at Chicagoland as we're under caution for the second time tonight. And I would expect Corey to keep the lead here. He does race off pit road between the 50 and the 92. Real close there. As Breeding, the 9. Oh, they're having some trouble getting the car refired. And Breeding, who was in the top 10, he's going to fall outside the top 15, maybe top 20. 
A terrible stop from the nine team. Again, pit road problems have plagued Rodriguez Racing over these past couple of months, and it just happened again. Every time the nine team has a really strong run going. I mean, this happened to Wisconsin as well. Just, they keep losing spots on Pitt Road. And that one hurt. Tim Fiegel is your lucky dog, so he is going to get his lap back as he just got put a lap down when the caution came out. So, unfortunately for Gatlin Downey, he is going to... Uh, have to hope for another yellow. Time for our second restart of the night. Corey Williams is your leader. As we are still only 33 laps into tonight's race. Green flag back in the air. Corey Williams with a solid start there. Goss gets a good start as well. James Elson immediately pounces on the 92 of Goforth to uh, take third place here. And here comes Vargas with a three wide move down on the bottom here beneath Bishop and Goforth. Ooh, Vargas, he knows he cannot let Corey Williams win this race. He made a big move there, trying to get track position. And he sent it three wide on the bottom. And he's got company as Jeff James. Ooh, he made, made some slight contact with him. So Vargas now up to fourth if he gets past the 11. And the question is, can he get to the 14? And look at this, look at Joshua Michaels in the 75, taking, look at this, he is up here in the mix. He got a great restart, and now he's battling with Goforth for a spot here. Tell you what, this 75 team, they, they found something tonight. Really good speed here, as Butcher though, he makes a dive on the bottom lane for the spot. But what a showcase this has been for the 75 team, really trying to compete with some of the best here in the Hardys National Series. As now Vargas is in a bit of some trouble here. He's starting to get a little bit shuffled. The pace not exactly be there for the 51, at least at the moment. But the pace is there. I tell you what, for his uh, teammate, Will Goss, he is all over this 14 here for, for the lead. Goss, uh, his last attempt, he failed to qualify back at, I believe, Homestead. So, trying to uh, avenge that uh, that DNQ from several months ago. He's looking really strong here tonight. Trouble on the front straightaway. We got a wreck here. Robinson, Comets, and Cloud, and Downey wrecking on the front stretch as Ryan Reed gets slammed into Voyles, Griffin, Labor McDermott, McKinney, Lassard. Massive wreck on the front straightaway, and that will put the caution back out for the third time tonight. Oh man, several cars hovering in the top 30 in owner's points. Cloud with heavy damage, Commons with damage, Voiles, Lassard. Downey cautions out, but he was involved in the wreck, so he's not going to get his lap back. And look at all the smoke on the front stretch. That was a massive wreck. Let's see what happens here. So, ooh, three wide coming off of turn four as, oh, Rodriguez hooked the 81 into the 44. And that put Cloud in the wall, and Cloud... Rebounded off the track and down he had nowhere to go it looks like and everyone else just piled in with not much room to move 
And Griffin Lapo McDermott, that's the third wreck he's been involved tonight. He's just been a pinball. Good lord. I believe this may be the third wreck for McKinney as well, so a couple of these guys just can't catch a break, it seems, tonight, so. My goodness. So there will be no lucky dog because the sole car that was left down, Gatlin Downey got involved in the wreck, so they're not going to clear him to go around. So retirements, uh, Downey's still on track, but we have confirmed Cloud, Voiles, and Lassard are all out. So an extra, an additional three cars out of tonight's race. Griffin Lapo McDermott. That car is battered to hell. That's the third time they've brought that car to pit road to fix it. But, guy, give him credit. They're not giving up. They may have lost a lap, though, under caution, we believe. So, we'll see what they deal with here. Downey, got to be frustrated tonight. Got the caution she needed, but sadly got involved in the wreck. And Eric Rodriguez, ooh, boy. Can't imagine officials are going to be too happy with him after this one. The uh, little scuffle with Kukulon after racing back to the uh, caution flag, or at least what happened after the caution flag came out a few cautions ago, and now arguably causing the biggest wreck of the night. I can't imagine the, there's gonna be a lot of very kind feeling towards the 63. There's Griffin, he came, he came back down pit road here. He's lost a lap. And I think they're just slowly trying to work on this thing. We're being told to actually put some tires on. Another restart here as we are roughly at the halfway point of tonight's race. We have had three cautions tonight. Was that the last one? We can only hope. Unless you're Gatlin Downey. Or Griffin Lapo McDermott. Corey Williams continues the lead. No one has been able to take the lead off of him tonight ever since he got it. But look who's got to run. Here comes Goss. And here comes Elson with a run off of turn three to make it three wide for the lead. Oh boy. They took their shot. They took it. And Corey gets shuffled to third. Potentially fourth here is Ellison and Goss making some bold moves to take the lead. That was a really smooth pass by Ellison to make it three wide, taking advantage of the uh, runoff of turn two he had. And here comes Jeff James now looking for second place from Goss. Sensing an opportunity here. He needs some points to gain on Corey Williams. And Richard Johnson now trying to move up here towards the lead. Johnson with a run. Jeff James cuts him off on the bottom. James now to second place as he clears the 50. Everyone just scrambling. This has just been the restart game all night tonight. It's just been scrambled to get track position. And I'm surprised Corey lost the lead so easily. But he took the lead once. He can sure as hell do it again. Johnson looking for second here, drove it really hard through one and two. But can he get the draft to get second place from Jeff James? He dives beneath the four for second. But Jeff on the top looking really strong here, got a good run. 
Corey now trying to uh, find a way past these guys here. Maybe looking for three wide. Doesn't take it. I think Corey does not want to take any unnecessary risks here. Oh, trouble! Doug Lockro has exploded the 35 car! Lockro and the 35 for Gatlin Downey Incorporated. His engine has just gone kaboom on the straightaway. He was 23rd and right at the halfway point, and that's going to be the end of his night. Here's the uh, highest running Spar Motorsports car, uh, Samuel England, and I gotta say, this is quite a bit of a difficult weekend for Spar Motorsports here. They have just completely missed the setup here across the board. Lassard, who even before he wrecked was struggling, and now England and Beale struggling to keep their cars in the top 20 right now. And tonight it kind of feels like they're the third best Honda team, which is a shocker considering how strong this team has been. And uh, you remember back in the uh, Wisconsin, Srigley had a, uh, a mechanical failure, so it's been a bit of a difficult couple of races for Spartan. Outside of Brandon Beal. And even he is struggling to keep this car in the top 20, trying to uh, hold off Adam Verlanice and the 63 of Rodriguez. So Spartan guys, they got some work to do. And uh, speaking of guys who got some work to, Nick Breeding in the nine. He led the opening t uh, 17 laps of this race and a few more. And he has dropped to 16th. And ever since they lost positions on Fair Row, this nine has just not climb through the field at all so bringing in some trouble here I wonder if the car is just not good in dirty air or something because he is just really struggling tonight meanwhile back at the lead with just over 30 laps to go James Elson is your leader and he's holding it Currently racing against Richard Johnson, Corey Williams, and Christian Vargas. That's a very strong group of guys he's in front of, and Jeff James, so. Elson, who uh, won at Talladega earlier in the season. It was uh, the best run that this 93 has had this year. You know, they've been relatively consistent for the most part, finishing in the top 15 most weeks. But. Never before has this 93 team just been out front leading laps like this, especially on an intermediate. So Elson and this 93 team, I think they got some nailed down tonight because uh, they seem to have some really strong pace here. But they've got company though. Richard Johnson out with a bit of a run as he looks for a peak in turn one, looks down there, but Elson doesn't bite and he holds the lead. But Johnson now on his back bumper here, trying to make a pass to the lead. But Elson continues to hold firm. Here's the uh, Turner Performance Racing boys running up here in 19th and 20th. So another tough night for this team. Turn points racing, ever since Bishop's win in Nazareth, they, these guys have struggled. They had some struggles before that as well, but these past couple of months, TPR has really taken a bit of a downturn. They've had one top five, which was at Memphis. Bishop finished second to Noah Hart, but other than that, this team has just been in no man's land. So far, things aren't getting much better here tonight. Bishop does get free of Sanders, but Sanders does lose position to Rodriguez. And uh, TPR, they just got some work to do here. And I'm not sure what the answer is for their struggles, but 
you have to imagine they are definitely got their head scratching on what's been the issue this year, especially after having such a strong year last year. And actually, I mean, they had a really strong start to the year as well. You know, this 71 and 97, they were top five contenders for the first A races basically every week. But as the season has gone on, their struggles have gotten worse and worse. You got to feel they got to make some changes here. As here we go, pit stops are underway. Cody Goforth dives to pit road first for what should be what we believe the final stop of the night. So... Goforth comes to pit road first. He brings Hart, Bishop, and a couple of others as they're going to try and undercut the field here. A few laps later, Elson leads the rest of the leaders to pit road. So he comes to pit road from the lead. There's Ryan Reen, the 24. He will stay out to uh, take the lead. Now, this is interesting here, by the way, because... Remember, Reed, Commons, and a couple of these guys, they got involved in a wreck. So, and they came to Pier Road and topped off. So, Reed and Commons actually have, can, they can run another up to 10 laps here if they choose to. So, you have to wonder if Reed and Commons may be considering staying out here as long as possible to uh, try and see if they can catch a lucky caution. Common sits in second. Here's James Elson. This is for the effective lead. So Elson comes off pit road. There's Jeff James and go forth. They pitted. And Elson, he's going to lose the, uh, in theory, what should be the lead here to Jeff James and go forth who pitted early. So, however, they undercut, but they didn't get too much of a gap here. So Elson. If he can just get the car, you know, um, get those tires heated up, he's going to be right back in the mix here. Oh, trouble! Luis Hernandez in the 94 is blowing up the 94 car! Hernandez making one of his limit starts in the 94 for Shade Binyaka Racing. He has gone up in smoke. And he, I think, is going to need some help to get back to pit road. And this will this bring the caution out here. Lights stay green, so Hernandez, they're going to try and tow him to the side. But his night is over. You can see the uh, fuel advantage that... Reed and Commons have. They have put everyone except McKinney a lap down. McKinney's in the same position as well, remember. But, uh, oh, Commons, he is, uh, remember, he's uh, got old tires, so he's going to be really slow, and he's costing Elson some time. And Elson all over the back of the 44. He has got to be getting frustrated here. He's losing time. There's Reed as well. These guys basically getting their laps back here as, ooh, hard hit the side of the 44 of Commons. That was, uh, that was a close one. So Cody Goforth takes the effective lead and Reed and Commons, probably realizing they're about to be biohazards. They have now come to pit road and we believe they're bringing McKinney in with them, so. There's Fiegel. He's uh, doing his best to get out of the way here, although the timing of how they catch him hasn't exactly been very kind, to be quite perfectly honest with you. But right now, this is for the lead. Cody Goforth, he was one of the first guys to come to pit road. So the undercut has worked to get him track position, and they tried the same strategy at Tokyo, and it worked for most of the night. But will it work here as this run goes on? He's got Jeff James sitting behind him in second here as we are coming up on f what should be 16 laps to go at the line. So we're checking out the number nine 
pit stop here because we remember what happened the last time they came to pit road. They lost time. So let's see what happens here. Ooh, Breen, a little bit slow. A little bit slow on the left side. Breeding has some issues getting out. Also, Bishop Jr. had some problems here with a Bishop Jr. with a slow stop. Breeding with another terrible stop. Oh no. Again. And look at the time loss. Breeding is dropping behind a lot of guys who were damaged. And another terrible stop from the Rodriguez Racing number nine crew. And that is going to put Breeding in another hole. That cost that stop cost him and Bishop Jr. Look at all the time they lost. I wonder if my hey Michaels, I wonder if he had a bad stop too, because he's also lost some time. He's fallen all the way down to the 98 and the 41. So we'll have to wonder if a couple of guys here just didn't get a good pit stop here. And that's kind of shaking up the order a little bit. Fifteen to go here at Chicagoland. Go forth is your leader. Jeff James sits in second, but they are going to have some company. James Elson and Ryan Butcher third and fourth for Shade Binyako Racing. They are right behind these two. And they've got fresher tires. Noah Hart back down in fifth. He undercut the field as well. And he now finds himself in a good position here. As uh, they seem to have actually nailed him a good pit stop. Will Goss in the 50 down there. Griffin Lapa McDermott just came off pit road. So he's struggling a little bit here. And he's off the pace, remember. And all these guys now trying to scramble for positions here. And it is an absolute hellhole for the battle for what I believe would be 7th or 6th. 7th here, so things are getting pretty tight here within the top 10. Jeff James, I think he can see that Elson and Butcher are closing in. So James probably realizing he needs to get things going here because he could be in some trouble here. Coming up on lap traffic, there's Gatlin Downey, slightly off the pace in the 12, but he's not, it's not too bad, all things considered. And right now him, he may be the only lapped car that they may encounter besides perhaps Tim Fiegel if they roundabout back to him again. But things are closing up here. Go Goforth is holding on for dear life for this lead at the moment, but how long will this last? Elson now, he's pulling away from Butcher. The 93 has really come alive here. And Jeff James in the four. He's gotta be trying to make a move here in the 92 in this corner. Here comes Jeff James, looks down low, but can't make the pass here. Go for it. Holds on for dear life here. And the patience is gonna be wearing thin. Here comes Jeff James, and here comes Elson, all the way down to the apron. He forces his way underneath the four as Jeff James gets it to go for it. Contact with Elson. Elson almost hooks the four into the wall. Jeff James slides back up the track. He recovers. What a save by Jeff James, and that was almost a disaster. With ten laps to go, now nine. They catch Downey. Downey goes high. Plays nice, doesn't want to get involved in the battle here. And Goforth loses the lead and he gets shuffled to fourth. And here comes Elson. He's just pushing the four down the straightaway. And here comes Elson now on the bottom. Elson looking for the lead against the four of Jeff James with the fresher tires. Here comes Butcher now underneath for second place. Shea Binyanko racing looking for 1-2 here at Chicagoland. Butcher trying to clear the four. Time is running out for the eight car. He needs to get past the four and clear him. He does. Here comes Goforth to get underneath the four as well. He wants third place from the four. 
I don't think he's happy with Jeff James for the contact off of turn two. But now, the battle for the lead between the two teammates. Not just for the lead, for the win. But will they have company? Corey Williams in sixth place. He's up to, he's looking for fifth from Hart. And here's the rest of the top 10. But right now the battle's on. Go forth and Jeff James have older tires, so they're I'm not sure they're gonna have anything for these two. It should just be between Butcher and Ellison for this win with six laps to go. Let's watch this again here. This was so Jeff James gets into the 92, which causes Ellison to get into the four and just Man, Jeff James, he held on for dear life, and thankfully Ellison backed off to give the four the room, but that was a close call. Four laps to go here at Chicagoland, and Ellison and Butcher have pulled away from the 92 and the 4, so the battle for the win will be between these two. James Ellison, he has already won this year. He won at Talladega, the team's sole win, but Ryan Butcher last year was came here, he was hot on the scene, performed in a level that no one expected, but this year has just been a struggle. And he's been looking for that second career win and the first one on the year. But Ellison, he knows what this would mean if he could hold off Butcher here for the win with two laps to go. Butcher trying to find a way past, past the 93, but Ellison, ever since he got the lead earlier in the night, he has been able to hold on against all comers. And coming to the white flag, Butcher gets a good run through three and four, but gets a little bit tight off of turn four. White flag in the air, Shea Binyako racing. Their driver lineup from last year, now bound for the win in what must be an incredible moment for them. Butcher goes high, trying to find a different lane to make a pass in the 93, but it doesn't work. Through turns three and four, James Ellison, with perhaps the most impressive race of his career, comes off a of turn number four and will come across the line and wins for the second time in his Hardy's National Series career. Ellison wins again, and he did it on pace. An impressive victory for the 93 team, and what a turnaround this has been after everything that they went through last year. Ryan Butcher comes across second for his best finish of the year, his, a finish he desperately needed, but you know he wanted that win. Goforth comes across third for his best finish of the year. Jeff James comes across for fourth. Corey Williams, the points leader, finishes fifth, so he will extend the points lead against Vargas, and Jeff James only takes a small, small measly point off the lead. A great race for Corey. That will extend his point seat further. Kev Shearer comes across six, though. So, Shea Binyaka Racing, three of their four cars finish in the top six. And Skytech 
finishes. They get five cars in the top six, so Chevrolet absolutely knocked it out of the park tonight. And Chevrolet belongs. Sh Chicagoland belongs to Chevrolet. I think that's the storyline coming out of here tonight. Will Goss quietly comes across seventh place with a great run, his best run in the Hardys National Series in quite some time. Richard Johnson finishes eighth, another solid run. Christian Vargas finishes ninth and takes another top ten in his stat book. But unfortunately, he lost a couple of points to Corey, and that will knock him back over a race behind in points. And Noah Hart finishes tenth after basically being nowhere tonight.